Hello there once again. This is a special broadcast on the changing political landscape in Zimbabwe. The country just lost one of its iconic public figures, Morgan Changirai, to illness. With elections almost knocking at the country's door, new alliances and the realignment of the party structures have become the norm of the day. Recently, former vice president and leader of the opposition party, National People's Party, it's Joyce Mujuru, announced a decision to join the MDC alliance. Now, in her Facebook message, she said, and I quote, be ready, be excited, we are joining the MDC Alliance. MDC Alliance, for those that are not familiar, is a grouping of uh, opposition forces that are committed to bringing um, an end to ZANU-PF's 38-year-old power uh, grip on power. But all does not seem well in the post rangirai MDCT. Uh, the party spokesperson, Orbit Gutu, quit the party, citing ideological reasons and violence, which has uh, been rocked uh, by the heated leadership disputes following the death of uh, their leader, Morgan Changirai. All right, so you're at home. Welcome to joining the conversation on our social media platforms. Uh, you can tweet us at ANN7TV. You can use the hashtag Africa Tonight and would love to engage you and read out your tweets. But for now in studio, I have with me Mr. Kennedy Mandaza, the ZANU PF spokesperson. I uh, also have Mr. Nwora Okonko. He's an expert on Africa matters in studio. And the phone line live from Zimbabwe in Harare is K.F. Malindi Jr. He is a political analyst. He'll join us over the phone. We also have Honorable Jessima Jome. She's a member of parliament for Harare West uh, for the MDCT ticket. She'll be joining us over the phone line. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank well, you. Thank you, uh, Audrey. Right, so there's two uh, discussions, political discussions that are happening within the MDCT right now. One of constitution, constitutionality and uh, the other of, um, you know, pop popularity. I suppose the two candidates, um, uh, Madame Coupe and, uh, and Chamisa, being at the forefront of that. But I just want to hear from you first, Mr. Mandaza. What do you make of Chamisa as a leader? Uh, good evening to your viewers. And... Um, to Africa in general. Um, our view in ZANU-PF is that um, we do not necessarily have a take on any one of the people that are touted to lead MDC at any given time. And uh, we still view that it is the responsibility of those that are in MDC to make their choice informed by uh, what they know about their leaders. So in our case, whether it be it uh, Chamisa, be it Kupe, be it um, Muzuri, it is not our business to decide. Whatever we think about them is neither here nor there. Well, I suppose we'll see what happens as we're approaching the, the elections. Um, over the phone line, Honorable Jessima Jome, as Member of Parliament once again for Harare um, West uh, under the MDC ticket, is on the phone line. Very good evening to you, ma'am. Um, thank you for joining us. Good evening on to you. Yes, Honorable, can you confirm to us if uh, indeed Nelson Chamisa was selected um, to be the acting president in accordance to the constitution of the MDCT in this, uh, in this instance? Um, you know what, uh, I think you must be fair to me. I'm not the party spokesperson, so um, as you know, there is, uh, there is, there is uh, a lot of discussion going on in the party um, about whether it was um, legitimate or not. But uh, the fact is that um, he is, he is uh, a meeting was held, he, um, was, uh, at the end of which was the resolution that he's the acting president. So, I'm not in a position to comment as to whether it was constitutional or not, because I determined have to take the constitution and actually like really like give a legal opinion about it. And uh, I don't think uh, <laughs> I can do that in this program. Okay, understood. But honourable, can you tell us what the constitution of the MDCT says in an instance where the president passes away and there's three um, vice presidents? The Constitution does not say what happens when there are three vice presidents, but it provides that where the president of the party um, leaves office either by, um, by, by resignation or possible death, um, the deputy president shall become, uh, shall become the, assume the interim presidency until uh, Congress is held, and which Congress must be held within 12 months to elect the president of the party. That's what it says. 
Mm. And what do you make of former vice president and leader of the National People's Party, Joyce Mujuru, saying, you know, she, she's kind of made a U-turn now and she will be joining the MDC alliance. Where does that put you um, in terms of leverage as we approach the polls? Look, the position of the MDC that was adopted at our last Congress in 2014 was that we took a resolution that the party would um, work with uh, would work with allies who are committed also to removing and uh, removing vanity of rule. So everybody is welcome to the party, uh, literally and otherwise. Mm. Well, Honourable, thank you. I'll ask you to please stay and hold as we continue to have this, uh, this conversation. Um, K.F. Malindi Jr. is a political analyst from Zimbabwe, also joins me over the phone line. Um, K.F., very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're talking of the two political discussions that are happening within the MDC, one to do with the Constitution, the other is to do with the popularity contest. What is your analysis of what's going on? Uh, thank you very much, Audrey. You know, I think the biggest problem that we have in Africa in general is that the basis of the way we structure our constitution, especially manifestos and parties, is foreign. Um, very few political parties or political institutions have multiple vice presidents. There is a clear hybrid in regards to um, when the passing away or the resignation of a president, what then are the procedures that are supposed to take place. Unfortunately, with the MDC, and only about 35 minutes ago did I receive a copy of the update 2014 constitution. The only constitution that was available was the one in two, um, the 2011 version. So constitutionally, things are still a bit array, um, but definitely we do know that an extraordinary Congress has been to, in order to elect uh, a new president. But well, what has really been done is that we're not sure what steps they're going to take first, going further. In regards to the alliance, um, especially with Joseph Jew, I think it is very important for people to align, especially the opposition parties, because Zanu Pierce, and I know the last time I said this on your show, I got a lot of slack on social media. <laughs> Any political party that runs away from it would be doing an injustice to themselves. The difference is that Zanu Pierce is a very powerful party, has been, and is even more now. So, for people to be prepared, they need to know that and they definitely need to pull their socks off. Right. Thanks, KF. You will stay with us as well. Uh, Honorable Majum, I hope you're still with us. You have taken a stance to say you're not the spokesperson of the MDCT, so you're not comfortable uh, to respond to some of the questions that I've posed to you. Can you confirm that your uh, national spokesperson, that Mr. Obed Gutu, has um, quit the party and the reasons behind that decision? You know what? Um I, I have read reports on social on the social media uh, that um, that are out there in the public arena that say that um, he uh, like a tweet that says that it's a big announcement and that he has uh, quit the party. But I've also heard and I haven't seen this myself. But I've heard uh, in discussions with other people that it's I've been told that he says that uh, that that there might be also a dispute around that. So look, I cannot um, because I'm a member of the National Executive committee of the MDC, and we have not, uh, I have not received any communication as a member of the National Executive Committee. We have not sat and held a meeting where I've been informed formally. So the information I have is from social media, and um, I'm sure you can see just how, you know, it's, it's not possible to make, to rely on uh, discussions and tweets on social media, because um, as, as a member of the party, I would be happy to actually see a formal, um, I can then say, um, take a position and say, oh, this is what has happened. But he is actually the best person to indicate whether he has resigned or not. Yeah, absolutely. In the of like a formal communication or a formal meeting. Mm, that's fine. With regards to the violence that happened um, at uh, the late uh, Mr. Morgan Changirai's uh, funeral, uh, Dr. Togozani Kupe, uh, your SG, Mr. Monzora, your organizing secretary, uh, Mr. Bebe, were beaten up during the burial of, of Mr. Changirai. The acting president, Mr. Chamisa, says he has asked for a report with regards to what happened. How far are you with this report and um, what information do you have this far? Madam, um, you know, uh, as I think if you saw the press statement, it's, uh, it, it is like the acting president has said that um, he has passed an investigation. And so, you know, I would, I'm not privy, I'm not responsible, I'm not connected with investigations and so on. 
I'm a member of the National Executive Committee and I'm not, unfortunately, I'm sorry I cannot help you there to say, to know how far it is because oh, unfortunately I'm not the one who's investigating, I'm not close to the investigation, so I'm unable to tell how far the investigations have gone, but I note that he put out a statement where he gave a very short ultimatum for uh, for uh, the investigation to be done and for uh, um, like information to come out. So I do hope that um, and I do hope that uh, the investigations have been done and that they have made findings. Because the, good, the wonderful thing is that from all social media, there seems to be a lot of footage around the video footage around the you know, around the disturbances and the violence. So uh, it is my hope that those who are tasked with these investigations uh, do investigate and make findings, and then the findings would be subjected to to, to, to due process uh, because we are a social democratic party. As a party, uh, we you know, there is no room for violence inside the NDC or outside the NDC. Mm. Honorable Majome, you will correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears you're distancing yourself from very serious issues that are happening within your party, the issue of violence, um, the issue of constitutionalism with regards to the ascension of power of Mr. Chamisa. As an alternative government to Zimbabwe, you know, you're seen as a party that would reintroduce uh, the issue of constitutionalism, a fair environment for political contestation, free and, free, free and fair elections. Do you think you're taking this seriously as a member of the NEC? Madam, you know what? You, we have a national executive committee that comprises about 50 people, and I am one of them. So I think in all fairness, uh, I, for you to say that I am distancing myself from the violence, you asked me a very direct question. You asked me to tell you how far, how far the investigations have gone. Right? And, you, and, you say, and you said you're not a part <laughs> think, of those investigations. Think, no, I'm not investigating. I'm a member of the... I saw, I saw the... You know, I saw the, the the press statement by the president today where he, I admit that he has issued an ultimatum of, I think it's 24 hours. So I'm sure, it, 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 let's put yourself in my shoes. Let's say you were a member of a national executive and um, of a big committee and you are not yourself involved in those investigations. I'm sure you can agree that not 50, 54 people are not going to go out and investigate. I'm not an investigator myself. I, I understand that, uh, Honorable, but, not, but if um, I were a member so, of the NEC... So, so I, I think, I think, I think let's, be fair, let's be fair, you're asking me something that I have no... Yes, if, if I were a member of the NEC, I, I certainly would be prepared for a question like that if I'm coming to a 24-hour uh, news channel because those are the issues that uh, the people on the ground are worried about and want to know that the party is taking care of. Anyway, we've lost Honorable Majome. They just bring the conversation back into studio, Mr. Nora Okonko, expert on Africa matters in studio. Are you concerned um, with the dynamics of politics within Zimbabwe, especially with the opposition, the MDC, that has been known to um, observe the tenets of democracy and, you know, do they still maintain that moral campus to hold Zanu PF to account or you know anyone else who seems to be diverting from that? Audrey, thanks uh, for the question. But in Africa generally contemporary, you are not surprised about any ton of events where it's a stronger party that is an opposition to the ruling party. So in respect and response to your question, the following are my take on what is going on in MDCT. Um, an icon of a leader departed when what he sought for came to pass. Now, the party was not expecting that to happen. Therefore, a lot of mechanisms that seems to have spiraled out of control are bringing up a lot of ugly things which the party is not associated to. Therefore, an individual assessing the position of what is going on can see that what is happening is a, a more or less a dissatisfaction with the leadership of the party, now in Shamisa. Mm -hmm. Because of the structure of the way the constitution has pended their leadership structure, they have three vice presidents, right. and one of them got the call. Why the two didn't get the call? Elias Muzuri and uh, Thukuzani uh, Kupe. Therefore, before that came to be, it already created factions. Those 
three, have factions. If you don't go for who we are loyal to, it's going to cause chaos, which you are seeing. So what the, AA, what the MDCT needs to do is to get their house in order to still maintain the support Morgan Shangarai, late Morgan Shangarai has left for them to rally around and cause an upset in the upcoming um, Zimbabwean election. Mm -hmm. And the alliance by the former president, dep for the former deputy president of um, Zimbabwe joining them. And all the opposition party could strengthen the base. Because bear in mind that ZANU-PF left a lot of unpleasantries for the citizens. Like the basic education uh, services are not in order. In fact, as we look at the latest uh, United Nations report, has actually grouped Zimbabwe to be 154 out of 188 nations. That's a very all-time low. Mm -hmm. Based on that, MDCT, if they get their house in order, there won't be an easy walkover. Yeah, in and, the, uh, and, and that's the question I want to pose to, to Mr. Mandaza. Um, Mr. Okonkwo speaks of unpleasantries that were left by the ZANU-PF um, legacy yeah, of, yeah. Of, of Robert Mugabe. Obviously, he's the former president. He's not there now. But are you feeling threatened as a party with having Nelson Chamisa lead the MDC alliance? Also, um, with the coalition from Mujuru coming in, joining that, uh, the numbers that we saw, the, the red brigade that we saw when Changirai passed away, does that speak to you in any way? Um, as ZANU PF, we are not uh, perturbed per se by the uh, numbers that thronged to, to uh, give a send off to uh, Morgan Shangrai. It was expected because ordinarily, uh, having been in opposition politics for um, almost now 17 years, or more than 17 years, it means he had a power base. And that power base he had to send him. Off. And we thank Zimbabweans for having done that because they done that. They did not do that on a partisan level. They did it in an African manner that they needed to bury one of their own who had passed on. And uh, coming to the leadership uh, and the uh, pending elections, ZANU PF has always been ready on the basis of uh, the policies that they have continued to send and say to the people. And uh, what makes this time around better than any other time is that um, uh, in the past, MDC relied on the Mugabe must go mantra. And now that Mugabe has gone, what is there left now for MDC and any other opposition to say? Oh, well, they and could easily say there's Munangagwa, who was Mugabe's right-hand man this whole time, that these um, atro atrocities or these unpleasantries were happening in Zimbabwe. Yes, like, like I've already indicated, they, if we look at from 1999, it has always been Mugabe must go. Mugabe must go. And we have always come here, even here, we have said that if MDC and any other political party has to appeal to the generality of the people in Zimbabwe. They must sell their policies. Policies that are different from those that ZANU-PF are selling to the generality of the Zimbabweans. And if they, whatever they have to say to the people of Zimbabwe is that Emerson must, Nangago must go, Mugabe must go, now that Mugabe is gone, and they change the tone and say Emerson Nangago must go, that will not appeal to the Zimbabweans. What Zimbabweans want is, uh, what brings food on their table. So people should come up with alternative policies, policies that would resonate with what Zimbabweans would want to have. Unfortunately, ZANU-PF is the one that has been crafting policies that are appealing to the Zimbabweans, and we will continue to sell that <laughs> and work on those areas that we have not been able to do well. And uh, President Emerson Munangagwa, with his coming on board, he has, he has said Zimbabwe is now open for business. He has even acknowledged that Zimbabwe, the, most of the things in Zimbabwe are 18 years behind. And he would want to work on those things together with the Zimbabweans to make sure that we are right back on track. Right. And, and if you recall when he was in Davos, President Munangagwa said that we need not look at what happened in the past. While at least we can learn from what happened in the past, let us look ahead and see 
and be judged by those things that we are doing currently to improve the lives of the people of Zimbabwe. And that should now be the basis on which any other discussion should take place in Zim. Right. Going forward, uh, Honourable Jessima Jome, is, is, uh, we've managed to get a hold of her. We'd lost on the phone line. Thank you for staying with us, Honourable. Um, now, just drawing you out of the inside politics of the MDCT and looking at the bigger picture going forward as Zimbabwe is approaching the polls, um, Zimbabwe will need an op a strong opposition party to you know, challenge the status quo and, and I assume as, you know, as the opposition that is part of your mandate. Do you have a clear policy framework and what is on your to-do list going forward? Before I go there, because you cut me off or I was cut off somehow, I must first say that uh, uh, you asked an issue about the investigations of the security and intelligence and the uh, violence. Yes, and please go ahead with that first. I'm distancing myself from the violence. So I think it's important uh, to be fair to listeners to note that uh, the party president issued a press statement, that the acting president issued a press statement saying that he passed the intelligence and security um, divisions in the party to investigate and uh, in within 24 hours now. I'm not, I'm not in any way um, involved in security and intelligence, so I would not know. So it's not correct for you to say I'm distancing myself. And then you also asked about whether um, the acting president is constitutionally in office or not. And I told you, look, I am a lawyer uh, of very many years training. And, um, you know, I am not in a position to be able to say to you this is uh, this was legally done for the reason that this issue... But are you not you know, aware of your constitution, on, Honorable Majome? Is, 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 is a moot point, is a moot point, and I do, I, I, it would be irresponsible of me, and ethical of me to prejudice um, the various different opinions. But the fact of the matter is that as of now, Honorable Nelson Tamisa is a, is a de facto an acting president. There was a meeting that was held, you know, as to whether or not um, it is constitutional or not. I told you that the constitution has a lacuna. It provides, it, it, it was amended, and in, uh, it, was, it was amended, it was, that provision of succession was crafted when there was one vice president. Now we have three vice presidents, and so um, at law we say that it is silent on that issue. So there are different interpretations that we can take the whole evening, pontificating about and weighing whether which is correct and which is not. And um, so it's also, I think we must also be fair. Yes. And on your question about policies, the MDC definitely has clear policies, uh, social democratic uh, policies, um, and um, that are designed for uh, to uh, to usher in a free market economy with um, with, uh, with with temperance and with an eye to marginalised groups, um, so that we remove distortions and everyone gets a fair chance. So I'm really fascinated to hear uh, our mm -hmm. PF brother there saying that PF is the one that has policies. But I, I'm baffled because if PF, which is what the current president is from, if PF uh, can be uh, praised for, he says it's the one that is crafting policy that will take the country forward. Excuse me, it's the same Zanu PF that is, has been in power since 37 years ago. It's the same Zanu PF that has been crafting and implementing the policies that have brought the country to where it is. So I think let's have some... Yeah, um, and unfortunately, really we are running out of time. And, and, Honorable and, and, Majome, we'll have and, and to leave the it there. the of the MDC are there. Yes, and, and I, I wish, and I certainly wish we, we had had this discussion when, when we started this conversation and you had been this forthcoming because your initial response was that you're not the spokesperson of the MDCT, so you're not comfortable saying some of these things that you're being um, upfront with. But I do appreciate uh, that you have finally opened up and you've cl uh, cleared some of the issues that I had asked you when the show started. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it there. Um, Kay of Malindi, I, I hope that you're still on the phone with us. Very quickly, um, your summary of the discussion we had in perhaps 15 seconds we're running out of time we're running out of time thank you very much Audrey. um i think first and foremost zanu pf should not i heard mr mandava saying that they're not perturbed by the number that attended uh the late morgan sangrais you know unfortunately they should um the death of abraham led to the israelites moving into the promised land the death of martin luther king led to lyndon b johnson finally signing the voting rights act and the death, this unfortunate death of Morgan Sangre has reunited the people of MDC. After Zanupia's November 18, uh, let's say, new independence day, Zanupia uh, made a lot of headway in regaining the trust of
of the people. And at the end, it seems like the whole opposition mm. fell back and was on a back foot. What we saw this past week is the reigniting of the spirit of the people within it. And once they resolve the issues of, of obviously the violence and the tribalism, uh, ageism as well as sexism, and once they have a strong leader to unite all of the opposition, that will definitely be... And, and I'm glad you've raised, raised the issue of, of sexism and, and tribalism because those are some of the um, opinions that, were, that were, we're seeing coming here on social media with regards to um, Dr. Kupe seemingly being sidelined from being the acting president. We'll have to leave it there. I just want to very quickly read out some of your tweets. I appreciate you engaging in the discussion. At Matli and DMS tweets, we need to see a copy of the amended constitution that was adopted in 2014 when the three vice president posts were created. This will go a long way in resolving this impasse. At Titch Ray says, it's an open and shut case. There are MDC activists that are masquerading as policemen. Uh, more reactions coming in at Tawanda underscore N1 says, I, I feel like people were scared of Mugabe and that made them behave a little because you know you'd go missing. <laughs> that was a leash for Zimbabweans. The moment MDC wins, Zimbos are going to show all kinds of lawlessness. And uh, when they're not happy with the government, I hope they are ready. Of course, um, Africa Tonight uh, does not um, uh, condone these uh, comments. They're coming from our viewers, and we certainly appreciate you tweeting in. At uh, Manjichara 3 says the MDC cannot afford to lose its jewels of the 11th um, hour. Orbit and Douglas are worth more opportunities. Uh, now, uh, Who now will appear as darlings, yet they they were rebels at Nelson Chamisa has to understand that one bird in hand is worth two in the bush. That's it for our tweets. A huge thank you to my guest, Mr. Mandaza, Mr. Okonkwo. Thank you so much for, I appreciate your um, analysis and your insight in this. KF Malindi Jr., political analyst, joining us over the, over the phone line from Harare. And of course, Honorable Jessima Jomi, Member of Parliament for Harare West, uh, under the MDC ticket, joining us over the phone line as well. We'll have to leave it there for now. From myself, Audrey Shimada, and the Africa Tonight team, Asante Sana.